John here guys, and today we're once again talking about motor sizes. That's right. Now, um, just to go down and describe motor sizes, let's talk about a brief history of what motors I have used during my journey through FPV. So I very early started on some cheap 2205s. I used the original uh, Racer Stars and then the OG Red Bottom Emacs. Then I went to gigantic Emacs White Top 2306s when they came out and they were just so fast and so amp hungry um, that to get control of my flying and become a better racer, I went all the way back down to 2204, then up to 2205, then a little bigger, then a little, then back down. Then I had tried these ZMX Finex uh, 2205 5.5s for a long time on Forest, which were too fast for me. And I settled on the OG 2205 Hyperlite Team Edition, the 2522s. Then I got a hold of something different. That was the 2405 Hyperlite that I've talked about in A Tale of Two Motors, my other video. That gave me my first glimpse at what low end torque can feel like. And let me amuse It's got a lot of pickup. It's got a cop motor, a 440 cubic inch plant. It's got cop tire. It was amazing for a pilot like myself who doesn't have the best lines, who flies um, kind of in the moment, who makes adjustments, uh, who doesn't know the exact stick input to make a 38 degree angle turn and end up perfectly in the corner of the gate. I just don't have those skills yet. So I need to be able to make super fast, quick adjustments in the middle of flight to correct myself. And when you're on a smaller motor, you may have experience going hard into a corner and needing to make that adjustment and just coasting through just flowing through like you didn't have the power to make that quick turn and that's because you didn't have enough low end torque on that motor so 2405 solved that problem but it has no top end and there was issues with 2405 6s motors and when i went to 6s i wanted to try something different so i did what i had never dared to do before everyone said don't fly 2207 it's too amp hungry your batteries will be destroyed in seconds you'll kill your lap times you'll blow up your electronics you're gonna you know get a minute and a half flight time um and you'll just be way too fast right those were some of the things that i would hear but when i tried it i was astounded it had 90 to 95 percent of that low end torque of the 2405 now this is on, on success uh here's one of my builds running 6s uh 2207 1722s whoa nice headers you've got a high-rise double pump carburetor that's pretty impressive Sam. Uh, and it had all the low end almost all the low end of the 2405 but the top end was restored on those 2405s your throttle would run out about 70 or 75 percent there was just no more power to give right this will blast you to the moon the top end speed i don't know i've never measured this quad but it is extremely fast i can tell in the straights that i can just boom fly past people but what people don't tell you is the ability to get those tiny corrections back integrated back into your flight now i run i made a video about these the mid pitch hq 4.5 um, v1s um, so it's a good mix between ultimate control the 4.3 and super high pitch of like the 4.8 uh, it's a good middle ground and uh, I heard another pilot talking the other day, uh, Brian, he was saying after trying 2207, he was so surprised at the ability to have control at low speeds. The torque of this motor, when you have the right prop attached to it, will keep you in the air at extremely low speeds. So when you need to stop on a dime right in front of a gate before you crash into it, make that adjustment, go back around, it's there. So that is the difference. I remember asking Yvonne, the top racer in our area, who's going to nationals in Vegas next month, why he wasn't flying 2207 because I saw him and a lot of other faster pilots still running 2206. 
And he basically said to fly 2207 until you no longer can make it two minutes on a battery. Meaning those top fast guys are sometimes struggling with the speed of a 2207, destroying, wiping out their batteries um, in under two and a half minutes, making it a struggle for them to last. But basically that there are benefits in the control that it provides. Exactly what we've been saying here. So the ability to have ultimate control in all areas of the throttle is the benefit. Now, if you're not at that top speed that the top, you know, two to 5% of racers are in, then you can take advantage of this extra control. Now, why do people enjoy small motors? Well, that's because you're a little bit slower and you have lots of control at high speeds, but due to the lower power, you cannot make those last minute adjustments because the low end power is just not there. You don't have the power to keep you in the air and have as much authority at low speeds. So that's the difference. If you make the jump, you may struggle at first because you are gonna be moving much faster but once you adjust, you will have a greater amount of control at low speeds. So if you haven't tried 2207 or larger yet on 6S, now I say 6S because on 4S, I do believe these can be some battery destroyers if you're heavy on the throttle, but even 4S can be great if you're willing to set a throttle curve uh, or a throttle limit and limit yourself to maybe 70%, 80% on the throttle max. This can apply to any motors, 2207 or larger. So many giant motors are coming out lately. It almost seems like 2207 is a midsize now, even though it was the largest size up until very recently. So smash like if you like 2207 or larger motors or just large motors in general. Let me know in the comments what motors you're gonna be running for the 2019 season. And as always, please click my links in the description and subscribe. Thanks guys.